Hi, today I'm going to talk about a couple of cameras. I'm going to talk about two folding cameras. First of all, I'm going to reference a fantastic book. This is often called in the business the Blue Book. Um, there were several different versions of Blue Books, and this was the Blue Book by Wallace Heaton. Wallace Heaton were the camera shop between the 40s and up to about 1980. They eventually got bought out by Ditsons, but they were Wallace Heaton of Bond Street. and. I think they were going, yes, they were definitely going pre-war and they were the leading photo company. And between, in particular, the 60s and 70s, they produced this blue book. This is a copy from 59. Um, apparently there's supposed to be ones before 59, but I've never actually been able to buy one before 59. But in this book, You've got all the cameras of the time and a description and prices and as a piece of history it's a fantastic thing to look at. I'm particularly like folding cameras and I'm going to talk about the Kodak 66. Folding cameras as you probably know were incredibly popular pre-war and after the war they kept making folding cameras people still use them the great thing about folding camera is its size because 120 film was still popular you needed that distance and in order to make something that could go in the bag of the folding design is a very easy and useful design the Kodak 66, let's think about Kodak in the 1950s. Kodak was a global company, very much like Microsoft or Google are today. People forget how enormous the company were. And then in different parts of the world, they had huge manufacturing plants. The biggest obviously was in the States and in Rochester, New York. However, the London side at Hendon was a large processing manufacturing site which um, at one point employed at least 2,000 people. I think it could even have been double that at one point of its history. And Kodak seemed, I don't know the whole history and I would love to know more about this, but for some reason they were allowed to make slightly different cameras. And if you remember, Kodak dominated the film manufacturing and were making one. The first box camera had 120 film. One way Kodak were able to sell more cameras was by introducing different films. And 620 was similar to 120, but obviously you needed a different camera. And a lot of the Kodak cameras in the well, from the late 20s, all took 620 film, apart from one or two made in England. Now, this model I'm talking about today, the 66, takes 120 film. It's always a little bit of a mystery to me why did Kodak, the global company, allow the British company to make this camera that took 120. They also made something called the Crestia, which was a simpler camera that took 120 film as well. Remember, Kodak was still making films, making a vast quantities of film, and I think that is why the English branch of Kodak thought, right, you know, we're selling this film, we might as well make some cameras that take this film, because there were definitely people who preferred 120. So it's really the same film apart from the spool. Let's talk about this camera. As I said, it was introduced in 1958 and lasted until 1960, so it had quite a limited run. It was against the competition of the um, Isolette by Agva and the Zeiss and of course the Zeiss Netta which is a very reasonably priced camera. Um, the Zeiss always gets the press. I was quite surprised by this camera. It has a pl grey plastic top. Uh, um, it's described as a telescope type viewfinder but it's just a normal viewfinder there. 
It is definitely trying to be modern with this plastic top. You get them in two models. You get a Model 2 and a Model 3. And initially in my research, I had falsely assumed that the 2 came first and the 3 came after. Not at all. The th 2 and 3 were launched at the same time. And the only difference is you've got a slightly superior lens. On the 2, you have a um, Kodak lens, which is 6.3. So not the fastest lens in the book. And on the Model 2, it's a four, I'm pretty sure it's a 4.5. So it is a faster lens. Plus you have more shutter speeds. On the Model 2, you only have bulb, 25th of a second, 70, um, fifth of a second and two hundredth of a second where with the upmarket one you actually have a tenth and a fiftieth and a hundredth and a two hundredth. Apart from the lens oh and the, um, the shutters are slightly different as well as I just explained it's a Vario on the Model 2 and the Volio on the Model 3. Some of the Kodaks the sterling cameras you sometimes get problems with the bellows i have used both of these cameras and i have found the bellows to be fantastic they don't leak they are light tight if we open the camera just check i haven't got a fill bin yep you can see you place the new film here to be round onto the spool here at the back you've simply got a red window people do worry it's just the red window let light through with um, i've never found it to be a problem you obviously have to manually set the focus again it's interesting that the focus dials on both of these cameras are in feet obviously european cameras would have been in meters um, to use right so you would set your focus point so if i'm focusing at the lamp which is about six feet let's set that for six feet you would set your aperture again it's a bit dim in here so i'm going to set it at 6.3 at one hundredth of a second oh 75 of a second as this is the model two to set the shutter i have to bring that mechanism over there and then if I aim there we are the shutter buttons there and you wind on I think it's got a shutter lock but on um, no, actually the model 2 doesn't have a shutter lock so that's excellent if you want to do if you want to do multiple exposure and get some ghost effects this is the camera to do it the superior model I have a feeling yep that's got a shutter mechanism uh, so you can't actually multi and I've just discovered that I've got a film in here this is fine now I could take a shot to fold up you just fold them up like this and there you have it Let's just see what the book says. Um, Kodak 66 for 12 exposures, two and a quarter opens at the touch of a button, eye level viewfinder, body release, accessory shoe, model two fitted with 6.3 coated lens, price. And this is in 1959 to 1960, seven pounds, 11 shillings, tuppence. Where if you want the model three, you're going to have to uh, pay a bit extra and it's nine pounds six shillings if you want the heavy ready case it's the ground sum of two pounds 16 shillings using these i've used both of them i think the model three is just a little bit sharper and it's obviously a faster lens I was really surprised. I don't know why. I was expecting them to be a bit of a plastic camera. The results, as you will see on this video now, um, were very pleasing. And 
I know a couple of other people in the photographic community who have actually also found this to be a surprisingly good camera. It's sharp, it's incredibly light, it seems to be stronger than it looks. Um, they're not the commonest camera if they're not incredibly rare and you do find them and expect to pay anything from you might find one at a, at a car brute sale for a fiver or you might have to spend up to about I don't know 20 30 pounds um, but it's a nice camera surprisingly nice actually if you find one have a go